Broadway is going back to the 90s, the 1490s, for Something Rotten, a brand new musical comedy. We're here at the Little Schubert Theater to get a sneak peek of this hot new show. Something Rotten? Now, this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it is going to be fun. I, I hope so. And not, rot and not rotten at all. And not rotten. Let's Please not rotten. We're setting, our, we're setting ourselves up if it's not good. It is very difficult to tell people when they ask you, what show are you in something rotten, and they blanch. I call it hashtag something fierce, <laughs> because, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of fierceness going on in the show. Are you excited to do a big, fancy Broadway musical comedy? No. Yes, I'm so excited. Okay, so set it up a little bit. We're in the 90s, the 1490s, and what's happening? Uh, it's about these two brothers, Nick and Nigel Bottom, who have this acting troupe, and basically it's sort of sucking, like they can't get a break at all. And, you know, damn Shakespeare gets everything. I am in constant competition with this unknown named William Shakespeare. It is an effort to try to make a name for ourselves as writers and actors. Is this your first time playing a bottom? <laughs> Uh, how do you mean? Is it fair to say there's a little bit of, of YouTube brothers in here? <laughs> That's fair. That is fair. You're the bottoms? <laughs> we are very much the bottoms. Oh, God, I hate Shakespeare. That's right, I said it. No! I do! I hate Shakespeare. I just don't get it. How a mediocre actor from a measly little town is suddenly the brightest jewel in England's royal crown. Is it fun to uh, sing a song called, like, I Hate Shakespeare? I love, I love it because it's, uh, I think it's a nice way in for for the audience to say, you know, all right, we, we're going to have some fun throwing rocks here at, uh, at Goliath. How can you say that? How can you say that? It's easy, I can say it, because it's absolutely true. Don't be a penis, the man is a genius. His genius is he's fooling all of you. Casey Nicola, uh, your director choreographer, is known for, you know, creating big production numbers. And I, I, how much uh, singing and dancing are we going to get to see out of you? I, oh my gosh, the production numbers are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. I think there are three show-stopping production numbers in the first act, and then maybe, th I think, three in the second act. And I just found out I might have to tap dance a little bit, so I'm very excited. I'm sure there's like a childhood dream come true, right? To be William Shakespeare on Broadway? <laughs> <laughs> poster to him right next to Star, Star Wars. Doesn't everybody? Please put your hands together for the one, the only, William Shakespeare! Thank you! I was so bad studying Shakespeare in college, it was never really my thing, and you know, I don't really know what half the words are, so I'm really relieved that this Shakespeare is a little bit more like a rock star. And so you're learning a lot about Shakespeare. Sure. I'm learning how his hips move. That's the biggest challenge. That's where I always start, as you know, the hips. You're also one of those Shakespeare groupies. Groupies like a rock star in the show. Totally. I'm a total Shakespeare groupie. If I weren't wearing like a tight, like, collar with a bib type dress, which I'm sure is going to be gorgeous, um, I would have him sign my boobies. But there's going to be no clavage anywhere. I'm ashamed to say that part of what I'm trying to capture with Will Shakespeare is the later Britney Spears, which is that you're just excited to see her on stage, even if she's not really doing all the moves that the backup dancers are doing. But I'm trying to get through the first number without breaking a sweat. That to me feels like this era William Shakespeare. How are the 1490s? Do you, do you like living in the 1490s? Is it a good period for you? As long as I have a pretty costume, and I do, from Greg Barnes, and I get to be a redhead, so, yeah. There's something about wearing the, the doublets and the big puffy pants and the pointy shoes, and it definitely helps. It's good for comedy, too. I'm really excited to wear the costumes. I'm not sure about the tight waist, so I'm trying to get as fat as I can possibly be right now so that when they build it, they make it fat so that I can eat dinner between shows. Because I play this Puritan, I play this Puritan preacher who has his secrets, but, and so it's like very slimming black, hopefully. I still look like huge in it. And sort of like Quaker Oats. <laughs> it's, I think it's fantastic. You play sort of the ingenue in the show. Tell, tell us, you're in love with one of the bottoms. I am in love with the younger bottom, uh, John Cariani, because I am a Puritan who's in love with poetry, and especially his. First time that you held me, I felt a million. Do, 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 do. 
there's a lot of hilarity, but there's, we saw today, we saw like what, you know, the Sweet Little Love song on the show. There's like a love story too. No, it's actually, you know, it's what's so smart about these kinds of shows is that of course they give you like the comedy and it's so smart, but then it's like backed up by a real heart. First time that you kissed me, first time that I was I yours you. eternally, you are the reason I do what I do. I think it's going to be just a silly musical, but it's actually a very sweet Valentine. I hate that word, but Valentine to the musical theater, to what we do for a living, and it's uh, very touching and sweet, but really funny. The biggest, most fantastic thing in the theater will be musicals. What? <laughs> musicals. What the hell are musicals? It appears to be a play where the dialogue stops. And the plot is conveyed through song. Through song? Yes. So, an actor is saying his lines, and then out of nowhere, he just starts singing? Yes. <laughs> well, that is the stupidest thing that I have ever heard. You have a very pivotal role in the show. Um, you, 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 you can see the future. I can see the future. I try. He's, he has many of the same powers as his uncle, Nostradamus. But uh, his, his, some of his visions are, are a bit off, which lead to some confusion and, and hopefully some comic hilarity. Go see a musical, a musical, a puppy beast releasing all your musicals, where a croon is a catchy tune, and leap and lady ladies thrill you till you swoon, ooze ahs, big applause, and a standing ovation. You do a crazy number, and I, I can't believe you're actually standing. Yes, yes, it is really, it's one of the best aerobic workouts I've ever had. And, uh, and I much prefer this than going to the gym. It is a very fresh, funny, smart musical for anyone who loves musicals and for anyone who really doesn't think they love musicals because it takes place at a time when people don't think, they're not quite sure what musicals are. So to watch them invent what uh, we have decided is the very first musical is the journey of the show. And it's a classic backstage musical. You've been in a lot of great shows. What, what, what do you love about this one? Uh, I love what I love about this one is that it is a brand new American musical comedy. We have no template to work from. We have no previous story in any other venue. It's not a film or a book or whatever. So we really are in there creating from the ground up, from scratch, and that is so exciting. To be able to originate a row in this new musical comedy is uh, is really exciting. Not only the comedic aspect, but also, like you say, being in a Casey Nichol production number is is something kind of kind of great about that. Thank you.